our songbook tonight. And I, was, I just got thinking we should have put the screen on this side to cover up the boys instead of the girls. And uh, But anyway, it is what it is. We'll turn to page 424. Oh, come, all ye faithful. Let's all stand. We'll sing it out tonight. Brother Carol, come lead us. 424. Father, we love you. We thank you for this evening to be in church tonight. Lord, we're thankful for, again, this season where we can think about you coming, being born, so that one day you could die on the cross for our sins. But we thank you for the opportunity tonight to get to talk with one of our missionaries via video. Lord, we just pray that you would bless that. And may it all the technical things work out fine tonight. And we just pray it should bless all that we do tonight. May it bring honor and glory to your name. We ask these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Yep. You may be seated. Let's keep our songbooks open there. And let's turn to uh, page 400. And uh, let's see here. 31, Silent Night, Holy Night. And Brother Carol, I'm going to ask you to come back and lead us in this song. And I'm going to go ahead and get the video set up during this song. Look forward to talking to our missionary right after this. 431.
Well, we are going to call up Brother Bobby Batodo, and uh, he's a missionary in the Philippines. Been there for uh, quite a few years. Brother Carroll, if you can just turn off the two uh, side lights, the white lights, and I think that'll be good. And so he's been a missionary for many years. I'm not sure uh, all the history that he'll tell us. Darren, can you go ahead and remove uh, that songbook there? And we're going to see if we can uh, make this work. Trying out some new equipment tonight. It's always fun. Is the volume turned up? Hello. For the Bobby, good evening. Or should I say good morning? Oh, yeah, uh, because it's uh, 8 o'clock in the morning here. Okay. The <laughs> Amen. We're going to, I think, uh, can you all see okay on the screen? Okay, I'm going to have to uh, redo this sound here. Earlier it was coming through the, the screen. So it's good to see you, Brother Bobby. I'm going to turn the camera around here in just a moment and uh, let you talk to our church. And just tell us a little bit about okay. what's been going on in the Philippines and uh, yes. tell us about your family. <clears throat> and we'll look forward just to have a, an update from you tonight. Okay. And if questions also pastor I, I'm happy to answer also if they have some questions yes sir uh, well I'm trying to get this uh, worked out here what do I do brother? okay <laughs> there we go oh I went away hang on this is new we got a new equipment and we're trying I'm trying to use my phone tonight There we go. How's that look? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to see the people. Uh, your people has been a blessing to me. Hello, everybody. Brother Bobby, why don't you go ahead and just uh, give us an update, tell us what's been going on, and uh, we'll let you take just a few minutes here and, and uh, talk to us. Yeah, and uh, well, uh, good morning, uh, I mean good evening to everyone. Uh, actually, it's 8 o'clock in the morning uh, in my country, and by the way, I am Brother Bobby, so I believe everybody knows uh me already because it's been a long time that uh, your church uh, supported the work here in the Philippines and uh, God knows how you how you became a great blessing to our ministry here in the Philippines and uh, I wanna say thank you uh, to all of you for your faithfulness in supporting uh, the work here in the Philippines, in Mindanao, the south part of the Philippines where, you know, there are many Muslims. And, uh, but I thank God for using me for 20 years now. And as a matter of fact, uh, yesterday, we celebrated our 20th years of God's faithfulness Amen. of our church here in, in, in the Philippines. I started uh, the church here in year 2000, and uh, by the grace of God, the work still going on, and uh, God saved souls, lost souls, added more uh, people in our church. Uh, by the way, uh, I would like to share with you about the situation of our country right now. In the first month or first two months in year 2020, it was a 
great months uh, for me because that started year, I mean, in month of January and February, I had a privilege from our government to preach the gospel to the LGU. Uh, I mean, in every uh, government offices in our uh, area in Panabo City, I have an access to preach the gospel. And uh, a lot of you know, lost souls got saved. And, but it so happened in the month of March, I'm so sad that the pandemic started mm -hmm. in our country and we have a lockdown. We're not allowed to, you know, uh, go out uh, from our home, except for one in the family uh, to go out to buy, you know, some things but not all of the family to go out, just one in a family uh, for about like three months. And then after that, uh, we reached to what we called a GCQ, uh, meaning general community quarantine. So from the age of like 21 years old, up to 60 years old, so allowed to uh, go out uh, under the GCQ quarantine, meaning general community, community quarantine. And we only allowed in our services, church services, or religious gatherings for only 30 uh, numbers of people to attend the church services and it's really hard for us and then after a month so it turns to mgcq modified general community quarantine where like in the religious gatherings we only allowed to have like 50 uh numbers of people in the congregation but no kids allowed uh no like 62 above uh, age of uh men and women are not allowed to to come to the church but as a pastor you know i have no choice if the people like uh, 60, 65 years old will come. <laughs> so I just let them come in and have worship with us. And uh, the like some parents that they could not let their children to the house. So they have to bring their children to the church. And uh, so I let them come in. And but we have to follow the protocols in our government, like uh, hands, you know, washing and uh, face mask <laughs> and uh, also the face shield to wear it, then the distancing. <laughs> so must be applied. And it's kind of hard for us really to, to adjust the situation. And uh, but I thank God that through street preaching, uh, we are allowed to go out and preach to the streets uh, under the MGCQ uh, protocol, uh, the Modified General Community Quarantine. So there, it will be a great opportunity for me and some of our members or Bible students to go out uh, use uh, banners and then uh, pass out gospel trucks, then preach the gospel to, to the people. And also, uh, God used also this situation for me to still have an access to like the prison jail where I can preach to like 500 to 600 inmates 
and uh, through like what we are doing this time you know messenger so i have to preach and then those uh, prisoners or inmates will listen to me preaching uh, through messenger and they could see myself and i could see all of them also uh, inside the prison uh, jail and i thank god for you know lost souls made provisions of faith and it's really a blessing and i'm happy to see that god still in the business of saving lost souls and like mm-hmm. yesterday i'm so happy uh, as we celebrated our 20th uh, year uh, church anniversary and under the gcq it's supposed to be like only 30 uh, people allowed in the congregation but all the members you know <laughs> coming in uh, they want to worship the lord so i told them okay so uh, we will having uh, worship services in the morning and at night but please uh, don't post in the facebook any pictures uh, while we are having <laughs> church services uh, because uh, we don't want to be in trouble <laughs> Uh, because you know a lot of people coming in you so a uh, great crowd uh, our church filled with people old people young people you know and some kids and so i'm kind of scared but uh we only having a live streaming uh the camera is focusing to the preachers or just in the uh, pulpit part but we try not to give focus to the congregation <laughs> so but uh, I thank God for uh, the 23 uh, visitors who come in after the service so I was privileged to talk to them and with some of our church staff, uh, talk to them, explaining to them the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank God for this, uh, their decision to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Amen. And I'm so happy that uh, uh, because during Sunday morning and at night service, uh, we have guest speakers, invited guest speakers, and the preaching is focusing on about uh, church because it was a church anniversary. And then in the evening is focusing in thanking God, you know, for uh, God's faithfulness because at night we are having Thanksgiving in the morning service we have church anniversary so what i did after the service uh, i have to gather the visitors and talk to them uh, explaining to them the gospel of all lord jesus christ because that is uh, what we call captive audience they are already in our church so we didn't we don't let let them go out and you know, never knew the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I thank God for uh, the response, you know. And we are able to baptize uh, four uh, new converts uh, who follow the Lord in water baptism. And also today, even today, uh, in our church, we are having youth revival because... Uh, this is what we did in our church if we let the kids the young people the members come in oh it's hard to you know have them in our church so what we did last saturday we focus our ministry to the kids because they're not allowed to come to church so we visited our their areas 
where we ha we are having children ministry and so we taught them uh, with the word of god and give some gifts to them you know uh, food or some snacks something like that as part of gifts to the kids and explain to them why we will not let them all to come in to our church in sunday and then uh today until uh tomorrow uh we will ha have youth revival meeting so focus is just the young people and uh so we will show you to you i will show in, in the uh facebook live or in the messenger uh for the pictures and the activities also for the two days so please pray that there will be you know uh great revival happen for the young people and there will be lost be saved uh also because we invited some you know visitors young people to come in uh in our youth fellowship we don't have outdoors games or activity because we don't want to be in trouble maybe somebody will see uh, you know young people not applying distancing <laughs> or you know uh, we don't want to be caught by the policeman you know so we just have our services inside the church and uh, I thank God that our the location of our church is away from the main road, so that's why it's kind of safe also that the body could see, you know, uh, what's going on in, in in our church. So it, it's great, really privilege, and uh, that until now we still have worship services even since the month of february until the month of december we never stop our church services uh we there are some who are not able to come in the month of march april may june month of june july but still we have church services because for the people who keep coming in so i let them in and i just yelled everything to the lord if you know the police will will you know uh caught me and you know put me in jail so i have to be ready but we try to follow the protocols such distancing wearing mask and uh face mask but sad to say the people when they were inside the church <laughs> they have to take off their uh, mask and so I have no choice okay let's <laughs> have worship services and some of them wearing masks and some of them are not wearing uh, okay that will be fine and I thank God until now uh, we never caught by the, the police and uh, I thank God that if you remember in my letter report in the month of uh, February, uh, I believe you have that because that's the only time we have international flight where I could send letter report. Yes. Where the mayor of our new elected mayor became a friend of mine and told me, okay, instead of getting permit from the government for having worship services or any activities in our church like church anniversary he told me that okay you can have your services but just uh, don't tell anybody about your activities <laughs> just let your people have worship services and don't let tell other churches that you have your church activities or having worship services just have your uh, church services and uh, I'm happy because the mayor 
is uh, his residence is about like uh, six blocks, you know, away from our from our church. Hmm. So it's he's kind of really a, a friend of mine, and uh, so that's a big help also. <laughs> Uh, that uh, we are not in trouble in our every church services and uh, so that's why uh, church I have to say really thank you very much for your faithfulness in supporting the work here in, in, in the Philippines uh, I was able to, to keep going uh, give focus in the ministry because your church faithfully praying for us and supporting the work here in the Philippines. And I forgot also to share with you about the last time I came to your church, mm -hmm. that when I came back, my wife and I, after a man, she got pregnant. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we have now, uh, by God's grace, three years old, uh, baby girl. Amen. <laughs> yeah, and That's I'm so blessing. happy for that. It's a blessing, yes, Pastor. Yes. Yeah, and uh, maybe the church have some questions, Pastor. Sure. Well, first of all, we want to say thank you for your faithfulness. That's a blessing uh, to be faithful yeah, for 20 years. That's just uh, that's just yeah. a blessing, and uh, we're excited to uh, continue to support you, and we're excited yeah, for man. your hard work. With you know, it's it's been difficult uh, for everyone this year, uh, but I think we understand. Um, we don't have it as difficult as some other missionaries like yourself, uh, but you're still creative in finding ways to have church. And I love the uh, ministry to the jail, how you uh, preach to them through the video and uh, seeing people yeah. saved. So uh, thank you for taking time yeah. to uh, talk with us this morning. Does anybody have a quick question? Yeah. We want to move along real quick tonight. But anybody have a question at all? Just something that you want to say? All right. Um, any adults have a question? No, the kids will. All right. Uh, what's your question, Darren? Real quick. Okay. Okay. I'm sure they probably have the same standard protocol as the two weeks and and the things like that. He was asking if someone gets sick, do they have to quarantine for maybe 14 days? Is that what the guideline is? Uh, this is what uh, happened like here in our uh, country for me we have this like we called it uh, something uh, a number where we have to bring with us when we have to go out uh, we called it QR uh, I, I forgot the, the, the meaning and that's what we have to show to the policeman and then if I have to go to the other city, I have to show that uh, little QR code. And then if they find out that I've been to other places, so when I have to go to the mall, uh, I mean, the, in the government, I'm, I'm sorry, in the, like, uh, in the department stores, I'm not allowed to get in because I've been like traveling. So I have to be uh, in quarantine for seven days, meaning just to stay in the home or like, I can go out the house, but not allowed to go to some uh, big like department store or something sure. like that. Sure. And uh, so, but for those who are really like have, uh, we called it uh, infected by the, you know, uh, COVID-19 so they will be stay in a certain area for 14 days you know 14 days sure. uh, the, the government will put them in a like isolation for 14 days then after that they will free to you know sure. go back to home, sure. uh, their home okay yeah very good anybody else all right well, thank you again, and I hope that you have a great day, and we enjoy reading Amen. your letters. I enjoy getting your uh, messages through Facebook, and I would encourage anybody else, if you want to look up Brother Bobby Batoto on Facebook, 
and follow him. I'm sure uh, you'll enjoy reading his updates and getting those pictures and things. So, all right, I guess we're going to say goodbye. So, uh, Lord bless you, and uh, we'll turn around one more time. And uh, hope you have a great day, brother. God bless you. God all right, bless God bless you. you. Thank you. All right. All right, very good. Um, let's see here. Darren, can you go ahead and turn that off? Brother Carol, if you can get the lights. And we're going to move along uh, the service pretty quick now. But I always enjoy those uh, opportunities to see our missionaries. And I tell you what, it's a whole lot cheaper than a plane ticket to fly over here and talk to us. Just uh, use the technology. And Darren, if you hit the power button twice, that'll turn off. And that way it'll go ahead and, uh, and turn off there. All right, uh, let's do this real quick. I want to see if any of the young people have a Bible verse. Anybody have a verse that you are wanting to say tonight? Come on up. Luke 2.11, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Luke 2.11. Luke 10.36, and as you would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. Luke 10.36. That's a great verse right there, amen. All right, thank you guys. Let's sing one more song tonight, just a verse a song to kind of get our minds uh, settled down and then we'll get right to the preaching tonight page number 434 434 oh little town of Bethlehem page number 434 we'll just sing the first verse page 434 Grab your Bibles. We'll get right to the Bible study tonight. Uh, the announcements are pretty normal. We mentioned most of them this morning. But I do want to ask you to continue to pray for Miss Vicki. Uh, she is uh, did not get good news with her cancer update and checkup this week. is is actually worse than they anticipated. And so now she'll begin uh, both radiation and chemo coming up soon. And then pray for the young man in the car accident, Dakota wells and pray for that family as he is in ICU the other announcements uh, you can just read through your bulletin yes ma'am Ava no he's not but he's really hurt and so we need to pray for him all right uh, John chapter 17 John chapter 17, we'll look at verse number 1 as we get started tonight with this message on uh, the journeys of faith, the journeys of faith, and uh, we're going to look at the journey to the cross tonight, and this will be a great uh, journey as we look at, and I want us to understand, and the young people understand that uh, Jesus came and was born in the manger, and you know that's the fun part, getting to uh, enjoy life as a baby and and uh, just no cares in life and you know young people really have it made you don't have a lot to worry about as you get older you begin to uh, feel the effects of of the world and the decisions that need to be made as you begin making your own decisions and making your own money paying your own bills and uh, that's a blessing amen and so uh, you begin to feel the weight but uh, as you get older the reality of life sets in and and so we love the Christmas story. It's a beautiful story about a baby, and it's sweet. Uh, but the reason why Jesus came 
was not to just be born in a manger, but it was to die on the cross. And we say often that he was born to die, born to die. And so the journey to the cross, very fitting for this time of the year, as we see the reason why he came. The Bible says in John 17, verse number 1, These words spake Jesus, and lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. The hour is come. Jesus knew that his journey was here. It's time to make that journey to the cross. John 17 is one of the greatest prayers of the Bible. We see the Lord praying to the Father for himself. If you read this prayer, and we'll not read the whole chapter for sake of time tonight. We're going to look through it. But uh, he prayed for himself, and he also prayed for his disciples. Uh, you, you think about what happened in Jesus' life. Uh, just a few days earlier, um, Jesus has, had entered into Jerusalem in triumph. I mean, uh, this was a triumphal entry. Uh, this was supposed to be an exciting time. But the truth is, the Jewish leaders didn't receive him. Uh, you know, they, or they rejected him. They didn't welcome him with open arms. He came there to Jerusalem. He cleansed the temple. He gave the, uh, the um, message there on, on the Mount Olivet. Then a few days later, the disciples and the Lord then uh, had the, the famous Passover meal and observed the, the, the Lord's Supper there. And then the Lord begins to walk down into the valley of Kidron and begins to think about what is ahead. Think about this journey. Now, uh, we all, well, I, I think this would be true, that when we plan a trip somewhere, we plan a vacation or a journey, there comes a point in time where we sit down and begin to think about it. We begin to think about all the details of it and, and how many, uh, you know, with our family, how many suitcases do we have to pack and, and get those, and, and can we get everything in the van and uh, that, uh, that van, we ran out of room in, in that a uh, little while ago. And now we have to have a, we have a hitch rack to put on the back of the van to hold a couple of uh, totes to put extra things in. It won't be long. I guess we'll just have to rent a U-Haul trailer and uh, pull that down the road on our trips. But you begin to think about what you pack, right? And if you're like us, we think about the most important thing of a journey, and that is what? Food. Amen. That's the most important thing. What snacks am I going to pack in the vehicle? And we plan our stops. Which places we're going to stop to eat at? And we like to look for places that we don't have around here because McDonald's just gets old after a while. But we plan all these important things. We will look at the map. At least I still like to look at the map. Maybe some folks don't. They just punch in the GPS and then just listen to that thing. Uh, not me. I like to know where I'm going and plan that. And I'll still use the GPS um, to help guide me on the turns, but I have a mental map and I know where I'm going and uh, we plan the timeline out when I'm leaving when I get back We plan the financial part out and we say I've got this much money to spend for fuel this much for hotels and all these things out We plan out the journey. The truth is the vacations the trip. Those are fun things But uh, but the Lord didn't have so much of a fun journey planned I began to walk down this valley, begin to pray, and say, Lord, uh, would you help me through this time in my life? We're going to look at three different parts of this journey uh, tonight and uh, the journey to the cross. Father, help us now as we reflect on this so important journey. And Lord, it's a journey that we are thankful you took. We know it's a journey that you willingly took. You didn't have to. As a matter of fact, you say that no man took my life but I laid it down and we're so thankful for that I pray it should bless now help me Lord give me clarity of mind and may I say what you'd have for us tonight in Christ's name amen I want us to notice the journey that took place and uh, first of all it was a planned journey and just like we would plan a trip this journey was planned the Bible says that Jesus knew the hour was come what, what does that signify you know, I believe from the time Jesus was born, and we'll just say humanly speaking, he was 100% man, 100% God at the same time. 
but from the time he was born, and we know from the beginning of time this was planned, but, but from his birth he knew the reason for his coming to earth. You know, we look forward to things in our life such as important birthdays. Maybe as a child you look forward to uh, the, the time when you turn five years old. Remember when our children turned five years old? That's a big birthday party. And then uh, you go and maybe uh, the 10-year-old uh, is a big birthday. I mean, you're, you went from single digits to double digits, and that's a big deal, isn't it? And uh, some of you in here tonight are about to go to triple digits, amen, and uh, you're, you're pushing it. But, uh, hey, 10's a big birthday. Then 13, oh, listen, we're a teenager now, and uh, we have officially lost our brain. We have no more brains when you turn 13 years old. And then, of course, uh, it goes on in 16's a big one, 18, and so on. And uh, we look forward to these times in life. We uh, look forward to the special things. And, and as you graduate school and uh, graduate college and you get married, you have children, just all the things, uh, the job that you have, you look forward to it. Uh, think about Christ. What did he have to look forward to? He knew from the time that he was born, when I turn 33, I'm going to stand before a man named Pilate. There's going to be a trial going on, and the people are going to say, let Barabbas go and crucify Christ. He knew that. He knows all things. But yet he continued, and I'm thankful for that. But it was a planned journey. It was a, a journey that was personal in Jesus' life. His father knew about the journey. And he told, he was talking to his father, he says, Lord, he said, he said, Daddy, it's time. The hour is here. He said, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. It was a journey planned between a father and son. It was a journey planned before the world began. I mentioned this morning in the, in the book of Revelation, it was prophesied before the foundations of the world. Not only was it personal, but it had purpose. What was the purpose of the journey to the cross? Oh, I'm thankful. In 1 John 5.20, the Bible says, We know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. What does that mean? It says we know that Christ has come, why? To give us eternal life. Well, I'm thankful for that. And I've got to remind myself often, He did not have to come. He did not have to offer me a gift of eternal life. I do not deserve that. I don't. If we ever get to the point where we think we do deserve it, oh, listen, uh, we're in bad shape. We don't deserve eternal life. We don't deserve any goodness of God, but I'm thankful for it. The purpose was to give eternal life the purpose for this journey to the cross was to glorify god let's read on down verse number two as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent now look at verse four i have glorified thee on the earth i have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. You know, that'd be a great verse for us to put to memory. That'd be a great verse for us to practice. What did Jesus say? He said, Father, I have glorified you in my life. So I've done my best to do everything that you wanted me to do. Do I glorify God in my life? Young people, listen, are you making the Lord happy with your life? How you're living, things you're doing, the decisions that you make, is he glorified with you? Uh, have I finished the work that the Lord has called me to? You see, the Lord's journey to the cross had purpose, and that purpose was to glorify God. We can share that same purpose in our life. Then, of course, we understand as he uh, continued now uh, through the, the journey, and, of course, he came to the garden and uh, prayed to the Lord. Uh, but then soon after... We see that he began to be betrayed. Um, he began to experience the pains that would come with 
being crucified. Let's jump to chapter 18. And we'll see that it's a, number two, a painful journey. It was a planned journey. Number two is a painful journey. The Bible says, When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where was a garden into the, uh, into the which he entered and his disciples. Then we see in verse number two, And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. You see, uh, the Lord, b before he experienced the physical pain, want us to understand, he experienced the pain of betrayal. Now, I tell you what, uh, sometimes I believe I'd rather just take a beating than have someone to betray me. It hurts. It's painful when we have relationships and all of a sudden people turn their back. Oh, you've had it happen before. I've had it happen. You, you just feel like, why would they do this? And, and when maybe when someone will, uh, will lie to you, I mean, right to your face. There's nothing hardly any worse than somebody looking at me and just telling me a bare-faced lie. I've had it happen in my life more times than I care to admit. And I think, why would you do that? You know that's not true. And they'll stand by that. They'll lie about you, talk about you, betray your confidence. Have you ever had that happen? You have confided in someone, and all of a sudden they have betrayed that confidence, made you look like a fool, made you look like a horrible person perhaps. Jesus was betrayed by his own. Judas, we know the story how he sold uh, Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And here comes Judas, uh, the Bible says, uh, there to the garden. Uh, he knew that this was a place that the Lord would come to often to get away and pray and have time with the Father. He said, you know, if there's one place I think I could find Christ, I believe it would be in the garden. And let me just say this for a moment. What a testimony. What a testimony. If I couldn't find someone and, and I had to stop and I'd say, you know what, Miss Beeman, I know exactly where they're at. They're out there praying. They spend so much time out there walking with God. I guarantee you that's where they're at. And Judas said, I know where Jesus is at. He's over there spending time with the Father. And so he came and he brought the soldiers with him. The Bible says uh, the officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, they were coming, no doubt, to take the Lord Jesus and arrest him. The Bible says that Judas stood with him. Oh, listen. Judas once stood on the side of Christ, one of the twelve disciples. Now he's standing on the other side, and you might say this, on the side with Satan. Satan was behind this, no doubt, to try to kill the Lord Jesus, to try to conquer death, to try to conquer uh, the Lord Jesus once and for all. Now Judas is on the side of Satan, no doubt a very awful painful time the Lord had to go through not only was the Lord denied by Judas but he was also denied by Peter we continue on down through the chapter we see the familiar story verse number 10 we'll not read all the story but uh, they come to arrest Christ and Peter said no not uh, that's not going to happen with me here and and he drew out his sword and he cut off the ear of one of the, the soldiers. Uh, let's, let's move on down now to verse number 17. Then said the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Are not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Think about this for a moment. Oh, listen. Peter stood beside the Lord Jesus in the garden, okay? He watched. This isn't just a movie. This isn't just some fairy tale. This is uh, real life happenings. Here comes Judas and the soldiers to arrest Christ. Peter knew Judas. Peter knew him. 
You think Peter in his mind had good feelings toward Judas? I think not. He probably looked at him and said, you sorry rascal. You are with, you are one of us. You sold the Lord Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. How dare you do something like that? And now here you are trying to rest my Lord. Oh, I believe he got worked up. He obviously got upset to a point. He drew out his sword and said, yeah, off with your head. I think he was trying to take his head off, and the, the guy ducked and cut his ear off. I think that's exactly what happened. My goodness, now we see Peter just a few minutes later doing the exact same thing. And the Lord Jesus has to stand there and just be brokenhearted. Now Peter's denied me. Doesn't even want to associate with me. And we've taught on Peter and, oh, listen, let's not get to the same place in our life. Listen, here it is. Here's how we deny Christ. Young people, listen now. When we are ashamed to be identified with Jesus, that's a denial. When we keep our mouth quiet when we should speak out about the Lord. When we just t turn a deaf ear to the things of the world, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we, we have our ears open to the things of the world, <clears throat> excuse me, and just listen, and don't turn that off. And, and we do the same thing as adults. We get an opportunity to speak out for Christ or give out a gospel track, and we don't do that. We're, in a sense, denying the Lord Jesus. So it was a personal betrayal that was very painful not only was that painful, but it was a beating that he took that was painful. The physical beating was painful. We'll not go through all the details of the beatings that Christ took, but I want you to understand he, he was just beat beyond recognition. It was just awful. The Bible says in John 19, so we're going to skip now to John chapter 19. This is the journey, John 17, John 18, John 19. The Bible says, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. You know what that means? It means they beat him. They took a cat of nine tails. It's a leather whip with nine straps on it. And at the end of those straps, they put sharp objects. So when they would beat someone, it would begin to cut their flesh and tear away at their flesh. They scourged him. Uh, they platted a crown of thorns on his head. They put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. All this, they begin to beat our Savior. You understand the crowd looked at Jesus and they looked at Barabbas the Bible says in verse number 5, Then Jesus came forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, unto them, Behold the man! When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. You see that it was the crowd that crucified him. Before we're too hard on the crowd, let's understand this as well. The truth is it was my sins that put him on the cross. Not only did he die for the sins of the past, the sins of the present, but he also died for the sins of the future in the world. The angry mob had taken Jesus to Pilate's hall. And Pilate said, I find no fault in him. Pilate perhaps thought that scourging Jesus would move the heart of the Jews and they would want to see him released. And I read this and, and I, I would assume it to be true, but at that time, from what I read and studied, scourging was illegal. We weren't even supposed to do that. And perhaps Pilate thought, well, this will be punishment enough. They will feel sorry for the man and maybe they'll release him. But you know, the Bible says this, John chapter 12 and verse number 40. Here's what scripture says. He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart.
that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted, and I should heal them. You understand what happened to the people? Their hearts were hard. They didn't want the truth. And they said, crucify him, crucify him. They were determined to destroy the Christ. So we see it was a painful journey. But let's notice the last part of the journey in John 19 and verse number 17. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha. That hill called Mount Calvary, if you look at it, I've seen pictures of it. You can actually see the outline and the uh, indentions in the rock, and it kind of looks like a skull. And that's why they called it the place of the skull. Verse number 18, where they crucified him and two other with him, and on either side one, and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place was Jesus, where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Third thing that we'll notice is it was a powerful journey. It's a powerful journey. You say, why was it so powerful? Oh, listen, because it shows the love of Christ, the power of his love. Uh, Notice in verse number 17, and he bearing his cross, bearing his cross. Jesus loved us so much to bear that cross. You see, Jesus was an innocent man. Four times Pilate declared Jesus innocent. I find no fault. Yet because of the pressure of the crowd, Because of the angry mob, Pilate said, fine, you have it your way. You do it. He said, I'm not doing it. I find no fault. If you want to crucify him, you crucify him. He gave in to the pressure. He gave in to the crowd. Jesus, the Bible says, he bore his cross. Why did he do that? He didn't have to. So you say, why did he do it? Because of his love for you. And his love for me. He carried the cross. And then, of course, uh, part of the story, a man named Cyrene then carried the cross the rest of the way. Or a man named Simon of Cyrene carried the cross the rest of the way. I'm thankful that he loved me. He said, no man taketh my life, but I lay it down. Greater love hath no man than this. Than what? A man lay down his life. For his friends said this before and I'll say it again I wouldn't lay down my life just for anybody I wouldn't do it I'd lay down my life for my family no doubt about it I'd put my life in harm's way to make sure they're protected but listen Jesus said I'll do that for you people that are putting me on the cross right now what love that was the power of love the power of humility He was crucified between two thieves. Oh, what a humbling and a humiliating crucifixion. As he was stripped of his clothes, he hung there between heaven and earth, between two thieves. These were were between the, the folks that had done wrong. Jesus hadn't done any wrong, but yet treated just like a criminal. How humiliating. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53, let's turn there quickly. I'm just about finished. I've been... uh, preaching in fast forward mode here look at Isaiah chapter 50 Uh, let's see here Isaiah chapter 53 maybe you haven't seen this before but this is an interesting prophecy Isaiah 53 verse number well let's look at verse number 5 But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. There's your prophecy of Jesus being beaten. But I want you to look down at verse uh, number 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered 
with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Do you see what prophecy just said in verse 12? He was numbered with the transgressors. You know what that means? He was crucified between the two thieves. One of three that crucified that day. He wasn't the transgressor, but the others were. What an amazing uh, prophecy back in Isaiah. And what a humiliating death that it was. But not only was uh, do we see the power of his humility, we see the power of redemption. Notice with me now in John 19, verse number 18. The Bible says, Where they crucified him the other t- uh, and two other with him on either side, and Jesus in the midst. Now, skip down to verse number 30. We see Jesus between the two thieves. Look at verse number 30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. You see, the power that took place on the cross that day was the power of redemption. Jesus bought us back. We've learned the beautiful story of redemption on the last several Wednesday nights. Mankind redeemed, bought back to Christ. All oh, listen, we were His. He made us. He created us. But the Bible says sin separated us. We, we have to come to a place where we accept the payment of Jesus Christ on the cross. And so He redeemed us. Hey, aren't you thankful this was not just an installment plan, but it was a plan Mark paid in full. He didn't just start the work that day and said, here's part of the payment. We'll continue more later on. He said, no, it's finished. It's paid in full. So may we realize during this season, Jesus was born to die. The real celebration ought to be not just the birth in the manger, but the resurrection from the tomb. Oh, the birth of the manger is nice, but if it weren't for the cross and if it weren't for the resurrection in the tomb, we would have no hope of heaven. So I'm thankful for the journey to the cross. We see it was a planned journey, a painful journey, and a powerful journey. And let's remember that uh, during this month. Let's pray tonight. Lord, thank you for uh, this message. And Lord, I I feel like maybe perhaps I have uh, done it injustice tonight. And Father, the time just kind of got away a little bit faster than I anticipated. But Father, uh, we're so thankful that you continued that journey to the cross and you didn't have to and father you could have stopped at any moment and said it's too much and you could have called the angels to come and just destroy the world but you said no i'm going to continue going thank you lord for that may we remember that often in our life and throughout this season Lord, we pray should bless this invitation time now in christ's name amen let's stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed for just a moment I want to ask you tonight, do you know for sure that you'd go to heaven if something happened to you? Do you know for sure? Young people, do you know for sure? Jesus died on the cross. We just saw just a brief picture of that tonight. He did that for you. If you do not know for sure that you'd go to heaven, listen to me, you can nail that down tonight. You can pray and ask the Lord to forgive you and come into your heart. He died for you to make payment for your sin. Piano begin to play. Let's spend a few moments with the Lord in prayer. If you need to come to the altar tonight, why don't you come and pray? If you want someone to pray with you, why don't you come? We'll pray with you. If you need to trust Christ to be your Savior, why don't you come and do that tonight? No greater decision than you can make to give your life to the Lord.